All right, welcome to this new lecture series. Um, fortunately, this lecture series is not labeled as usual, so but this is crop anatomy lecture, flora parts. We'll be looking at the flora parts of the plant in this lecture, um, both the dicot and the monocot. Not really both in dicot and monocot as per se, but we'll be looking at the flora, the main flora parts of uh, a plant. And then we'll look at the different types of flowers that we also have briefly okay so the flower is largely regarded as a modified shoot and its parts are homologous of leaves okay flower automatically is a determinate stem with crowded appendages with internals much shortened or obliterated which means that the flowers have um, a, a fixed time to come up they have a fixed design and structures that are made they're made up of all right so the parts of flower and the arrangement the flower consists of an axis also known as a receptacle and the lateral appendages the appendages are known as floral parts or floral organs they are sterile flowers are sterile and reproductive the sepals and petals which constitute the calyx and corolla respectively are the sterile parts while the stamens and capels are the reproductive parts the vegetative shoot shows unlimited growth, whereas the flower shows the limited growth. In the flower, the apical meristem ceases to be active after the formation of floral parts. Once the entire flower is being formed, the apical meristem ceases to divide any further into anything again. Okay, so this is a lim it has a limited growth from uh, rate, unlike the vegetative part which continues to grow, except at the time of flower formation when the plant ceases to grow for especially annual plants but for perennial plants um, the vegetative part continually grows but though there is a pause during the flowering stage but after the flowering stage it continues again okay flowers can be whole arrangement of parts spiral adnation of parts of two or more different holes cohesion of parts within a whole and so on and so forth Briefly, let's look at the parts of the flower in the diagram format. We have the stigma, the style, the ovary. This entire structure here is called the pistil. While we have the um, anther and the filament called the stamen. So these and these are the reproductive parts of the flower. We have the petal, the sepal, the receptacle. Okay. These sepetal and sepal are the non-reproductive parts that are sterile. Okay, so we have the pedicel, the stalk holding the flower, connecting the flower to the plant. Sepals, <clears throat> they resemble leaves in the anatomy. Each of them consists of ground parenchyma, a branched vascular system, and an epidermis. The chloroplasts are found in green sepals, but lack any form of differentiation into spongy and palisade parenchyma. They may contain crystals containing cells, platycifiers, tanning cells, and other ideoplasts. Epidermis of cells may possess stomata and trichomes. Petals. The petals are also resemble leaves in their internal structure. They contain ground parenchyma, more or less branch vascular system, and an epidermis. They also may contain crystal containing cells, platycifiers, tanning cells, and certain ideoplasts. They contain pigment containing chromoplast. The epidermal cells contain volatile oils which emit the characteristic fragrance of the flowers. Okay, for those of you that are, are sniffing of flowers, I want to know how a flower smells and so on. That smell most likely comes from the epidermal cells and on the petals. Stamen. The stamen commonly consists of a two-lobed, four-locked anther. Two lobed, that means they had the two parts. All right, then four anthers. Anther is found situated on a slender filament bearing single vascular bundle. Structure of filament is simple. The vascular bundle is amphicribal and remains surrounded by parenchyma. Epidermis is cutinized and bears trichomes. Stomata may also be present on epidermis of anther and filament. Anther as epidermis as outer layer, followed by endotechium. Innermost layer is multinucleated and known as tapetum. 
Walls between Tapetum and endotelkum is destroyed at development of pollen sac. Tapetum disintegrates at maturation of pollen. At the time of the, the incense of anthers, the pollen are released through stomium. We have the gynocum, which is a carpel. The unit of gynocum is called carpel. A flower may possess a carpel or more than one. If two or more are present, they may be united or free from one another. The united carpels are known as syncarpos. When they are free, the gynocum is called apocarpos. A gynocum with single carpel is called a simple pistil, while a syncarpos gynocum is called a compound pistil. The carpel is differentiated into ovary and style. The upper part of the style is differentiated into a stigma. The ovary and style are composed of epidermis, ground tissue of parenchyma, and vascular bundles. Outer epidermis is cutinized and may contain stomata. Right, so we have a, <coughs> a diagrammatic view of the flower. Uh, you have the style, you have the ovary, you know, I said the, both, all of these make up the carpel. You have the ovary, you have the ovule, okay? And then we have the pollen tube that runs up to this point here where the pollen is received, okay? We have the pollen nucleus. This is a pollen that came from ins here and went inside to fuse with the egg inside the ovule, all right? So we also have the stamen from here to here is called the stamen. The anther is this part of is this part here, right? We have this filament. This is a filament, okay? This is a sepa. Um, what again? What again? The stigma. The top here is a stigma, and we have the petal, okay? Uh, this is a vascular bundle arrangement of the flower. You have the vascular bundles, and you have these parts that connect with the other areas of the flower. Okay, so this is basically what the flower structure looks like. You need to take a very good um, study of it, understand the arrangements, and if possible, learn to draw this flower, especially this one, this one. Okay. All right, we have the perfect and imperfect flower. There are two main types of flower. We have the perfect and imperfect flower. Um, we have the perfect flower, which has both the carpel and the stamen together on one flower. Okay, some, in some cases they are called compound flowers. In some cases they are called bisexual flowers. Why we have the, um, this, the imperfect flower whereby we have only the carpel or only the stamen on a flower. In this case, for fertilization to take place, the pollen has to move the transfer from year to year in one way or the other by wind, by bird, by insects, by humans. While these can self-pollinate easily, the moment they enter the essence takes place, the dust can easily, the pollens can easily fall on here. The pollens are mostly dust-like. You can uh, you, f you could see them in certain f flowers, but some you won't be able to see them, all right? So basically, I want to look sure as a summary of what I'm talking about in terms of the flower. For monocots, we have uh, usually three floral parts, okay? We have three floral parts for monocots, while for diacots, usually four or five floral parts. In terms of the sepals, the sepals and all the petals, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, so the difference is that in monocots, there are three floral parts. You can see the petals and the sepals are in trees. Why that of the diacot, they are usually in five. This summary we will use in our concluding class, but for now, just use this to understand the differences between the monocot and the diacot. So that's all for this class. I hope you you do subscribe to this channel don't fail to give drop a comment in the comment section if you have any question i will attend to it thank you see you in this class